very good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, on behalf of the Aramuna organization, I warmly welcome you to this discussion that we're doing today on the economic crisis and how to come out of the rock bottom we seem to have hit. So you and I both, right? We have, since the beginning of this year, we have witnessed and experienced the unprecedented economic crisis in Sri Lanka. The way I see it, there are two main features of this crisis. The first is illiquidity or the lack of liquid foreign reserves. We have barely been able to afford two weeks worth of imports at any given time since the beginning of this year. And because of that, there have been shortages in fuel, cooking gas, medicine, and some food. Long lines to buy fuel and gas, as well as the lack of power, really. I mean, brought this country to a grinding halt, created social unrest, and to the extent that it became unstable. The second problem, the second feature rather, is insolvency or the inability for the country to pay off its massive debt overhang. Sri Lanka owes foreign debt alone, Sri Lanka owes 51 billion US dollars, 7 billion of which needs to be paid back this year, and 28 billion of it needs to be paid back by 2028. And there are some immediate causes to this crisis, or triggers rather. So 2019 Easter attack, that's when we started these recent shocks to the economy. Then came COVID. So both of these exogenous shocks took a toll on the foreign exchange inflow to the country. Therefore, it instantly impacted the current account. But then there were some global factors as well, some global triggers. Significant supply chain issues have been bubbling up uh, in the heat of the trade wars in 2018 and 2019 that ventured into new territory when COVID-19 began and they continue today. So in this context of the pandemic, global supply chain issues and hikes in oil prices, as well as exponential rise in shipping and freight costs overall, in the world, right? They've bit into all our surpluses from trade. And this situation has really took a, taken a toll on Sri Lanka's foreign exchange earnings, our current account. We have not been able to manage our debt or finance our imports. And the deficit financing that we have been doing, the fiscal deficit, um, we have not been able to manage it because we've it's a combination of uh, borrowings as well as uh, mint printing money. That, uh, that's the strategy that has been so far. And we have not been able to meet our deficit. So this is where we're at. And as the solution, we have decided to pursue or seek the assistance of the IMF. Um, and uh, we've had um, discussions with the IMF this year that has resulted in a staff level agreement of $2.9 billion over the course of 48 months. This was recently announced. Um, but of course, the board approval is still pending and we don't know the timeline. So these are all yet to be determined. But this is the current situation. So many people that I know, particularly in Colombo, they seem a little placated by the fact that we have decided to pursue the IMF option. But is this adequate? Um, are we doing enough to come out of the crisis? So that's the main question. $2.9 billion over the course of 48 months, right? That's what we are thinking. So we're in conversation today and, and also in discussion with all of you, with Dilip Jayavira, the chairman of George Stewart Group of Companies and the founder and chair of Triad, Derana, as well as Citrus Leisure. Dilip, you have always advocated thinking creatively, trying to find innovative solutions to various problems that come up, right? So what's your take on the current state of play? Let me put it this way. Now I am in the worst position to talk to anyone in finding solutions. 
uh, the recent past. Uh, my friends know I've been blamed. Uh, some of my friends are here specially to raise this question. So I'm telling you in advance. So I take the blame. Uh, for that part of the disaster. Uh, but having said that, for last almost 30 or decade, 30, uh, 30 years or so, we were very much involved in the social dialogue as much as us being uh, entrepreneurs and uh, you know being part of the business community we were very active uh, uh, alongside in driving this nation and uh, infusing the nation with whatever the innovative idea that we could uh, sort of contribute so that possibly is one reason that if at all if there's any uh, right for us to get up and say that we must wake up and we must think uh, differently or we must think of a solution. So uh, this was as early as 2007 when I got this book translated Confessions of Economic Hitman uh, and got it published in similar speech at Golf Hills Hotel I remember telling the audience uh, which, we, which is on record say that we will face this situation for obvious reasons and now we have come here but in between whatever the solutions we found, try to find is all with lot of bona fide uh, with 100% with, with genuinity or without have, having any other uh, strings attached to that now here we are because as Aramuna organization we are here to uh, sort of promote uh, entrepreneurship, uh, innovation, uh, the inno uh, innovative thinking, creativity and we go from uh, small and medium so called entrepreneurs to whoever whom we can uh, absorb into this network of thinking to say that we need to think differently and we think we have to think creatively. But in this dialogue as uh, Wagisha, my friend mentioned, we hear this. Uh, uh, in raw form, uh, the numbers, uh, as you all know, uh, the situation here uh, uh, is being discussed in many fora. We read uh, lots of articles. We we see lots of uh, talk shows, and in every, almost every one of those talk shows or articles or whatever, it is centered. Uh, this whole discussion is centered around this kind of numbers. As you could see that we report almost 80 billion uh, or estimated 80 billion, 84 billion last year uh, per GDP. And it is when you bring it down to per capita, we are almost talking about 4,000. This is in fact is about 20,000, uh, 20, 20, 25,000 rupees per day uh, per household income. Now, this will give you an idea. These numbers are numbers. You and I know in this country, a per person can't have that kind of income. So, we take this as the base and we crunch numbers and this is probably is true. And this is this these numbers you can see primary primary account deficit. So these are the numbers that we should we should talk about. Then we get numbers like exports. I while ago I saw that we have done ten percent more than last month of exports. But out of our exports, this twelve billion we have done half of it is uh, in the from the apparel sector. So half of that is we have paid back as intermediary. Uh, uh, imports. So, we, we these numbers are not giving us the real picture, the truth. We have to really go into the numbers and see where we are. I mean, if you look at it's a net net 12 billion, it's a good figure in fact, but in fact the net, net figure is much, much less. So, uh, then the tourism figures, no one knows from where these numbers come. Still for all, it is very bad. I mean, at least we have recorded a 2017 uh, 3.9 and now we are uh, basically expecting something like 1. Uh, but even if we do better, that's what I want to say. Uh, 
these numbers are not representative of the, the reality of this country's economic situation. These, these numbers, in fact, the tourism numbers we know, since we represent the industry, this is coming from uh, very, very uh, unreliable sources. So, uh, the remittances, for sure, this one can say because it is coming and hitting the bank uh, every day in the morning and you know this is true, but you can see how bad it is anyway. You know, from 2018 to 2021. The point is, but we take these numbers, we have a serious discussion in the country. You know, the academia, I mean, in the politicians, they discuss these numbers. And they, they, they seem to be looking for solutions. Uh, like, example, they want to bridge the gap in the current account deficit. So, uh, these, are the, uh, these are the figures that you see. This uh, we, we wanted to sort of bring into a slideshow so that you can have one glance at it. But what does it really show is that, that we have a big uh, so-called uh, expenditure out of that 24 percent is salaries and wages. Now, these are, I mean, these are the numbers which in fact uh, shock us, but this is just numerical. This whole story is still on numbers. So, can the numbers solve the numbers deficit? is the question at hand. So, it is our belief after studying this whole narrative and the trajectory which is uh, being discussed that we have a major deficit in our thinking as a nation at every level. So, every level we are trying to find solutions and as I mentioned first to start with our base is wrong. Our numbers are uh, numbers of sometimes is not representative of the reality or the numbers we do not see the see a solutions point of view. But then we try to find solutions like this. So, simplify that you know with this IMF solution that we discuss I know that there are other things attached to that uh, I am not against. Uh, personally uh, for this IMF in uh, the, the involvement, but it is just a shipment of fuel that we are we are seeking for. This is the money that we are all this discussion is about that if you are talking about the money. So, one can say this can give confidence to the, the rest of the, uh, the organizations and the country's image. It is like one bank is giving us money or rest of the banks will also come behind and give us, uh, give uh, George Stewart uh, some money uh, because one bank is giving, uh, but it does not work like that. It really does not work like that. So, now the government is trying to contract the economy. So, you can see the, the policy rate increase, the T bills increase, uh, AWPLR, uh, the increase. Now, these from a numbers point of view, contraction of economy a solution that they, they see in this discussion. But you and I know, most of you know, that, uh, with the 30 percent interest, uh, interest payment to a bank, you can, you can't borrow and no business can make 30 percent profit, even if you run a brothel. Some, whoever who run brothels would know the truth. Uh, so, now they are trying to impose these taxes 30 percent, 35 percent. So, these are very conventional tools. So, what are they trying to do? This nation has been driven. Uh, which figure is not, this figure is not available in any, any uh, central bank report by the private sector. Private sector drives the, the whatever the innovation so far driven, driven, so far brought into the picture is by the private sector. It is by the entrepreneurs. It is the, it is the thinking of the entrepreneurs which has sort of brought this country to at least to this level. And by killing the private sector, by killing the, the, the sentiments of the private sector, 
by trying to contract the so called economy uh, using these conventional tools we believe that's really really could be the most disastrous thing that they could do. But while arguing that the taxes have to be managed for sure uh, probably increased yes but what is the rationale how do you do that why do you do that who should be subjected to this kind of taxation. So technically speaking the public sector private sector discussion is very simple public sector does not have uh, any chance of any infusion of creative thinking or innovation. You think at which point with due respect to whoever who are in these seats from president downwards the political hierarchy can they contribute creatively, creatively to this nation's thinking. Have they done it in the past? Have you seen them doing it? Then comes the bureaucracy. So they sit with this bureaucracy and discuss this problem. Where would the innovative thinking come to the discussion? They will crunch the same numbers, same discussion. They will take case studies from the rest of the world. They will take uh, completely uh, unrelated uh, examples and they will take this conversation or the dialogue forward. So as a result, we will see very conventional solutions which will not give us any benefit to solve the present issue which is in fact is not a present issue this has been a historical issue because this create this nation does not have infusion of creativity to the to the nation's progress it it is coming only through only through the private sector entrepreneurship only so you look at uh, i must say with due respect to uh, my friends who are from the university academia at which university do we do do we bring the creativity infusion in this country I am asking you. How many such things we have done the, the public universities as we call it. Have we done it? Have we done sort of research? Uh, have we done uh, innovations? If at all if we have done innovations it is very limited. My friend Amit is here and probably might uh, say that uh, Morto University has done a bit, agree. We, there are exceptions, but it is not in the DNA of the nation, this is my point. This nation's DNA does not have it from public sector to participate in creative infusion. So we are basically, have, we have got an apple. we are sitting and now wondering what to do with this. One can say we can do fruit salads out of it. One can say we can do juice out of it. One can say just we can eat it or we can cut it into this many pieces and we can di divide it. But that is where we are today as a nation. But can we ever move forward with that kind of thinking for 70 odd years? Not that this country have stayed at the same place, but we have not progressed because in every dialogue we say we are, we are in a global village, the world is, the world is globalized, we can't, we can't be away from that, which is the truth. So, so what are we doing? What are you doing? We do the same thing. And we keep saying by doing the same thing and expecting a different result should be called insanity as it has been called. And we know that but we do the same thing and we continue to do the same thing. Look at the, the complete trajectory on this discussion of economic crisis. Where do we bring up that we need to think solutions outside the conventional solutions? We do not discuss that. That is why we are waiting till the IMF uh, infusion comes, uh, the, the money comes. You can see even if that care comes tomorrow, it is not going to solve the problem. It is even easier to say that uh, 
probably you know you block one uh, shipload of uh, fuel coming into the country by controlling the uh, like using the QR code is easier than expecting IMF to come. So, we will reduce the consumption of fuel by one shipload. So, that is equivalent to IMF infusion. What is this big dialogue about it? So, this is the, the whole problem. What do we have to do? We need this apple. Now, the same apple, the moment you, you think differently, it gives you the largest market cap is from apple. How did they think differently? Because that is in the DNA of the, of the, of the, of the system of that nation. This country, we cannot come out. Thank you for that insight. I must thank him for that. Uh, however, we cannot come out. Remember, we are waiting for Godot. He will never come. This is, this is a sad situation. This country is sitting and waiting till something happens. Something is very, 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 very clear. Even if we get this kind of solutions, the conventional solutions that they talk about, we are in damn deep shit, so to say. So, if we do not actively get involved in this dialogue, they may say that they can sell all the 500 odd SOEs, including sometimes SLT or Sri Lankan Airlines. Me and my friends, at Aramuna, we have Francis numbers, Sri Lankan Airlines numbers, example, easiest is to sell, knowing very well there is no buyer, because no buyer would want to buy that with that kind of debt. So, government can absorb the debt, then I will buy it, you will buy it, anyone will buy it. Then government also can run it, if you can, they can absorb the debt. You know, it is undercapitalized, totally undercapitalized SOE or or we, if we call it. Sri Lankan Airlines case study, one must deeply study. If there is any opportunity, you must study that. I think Sri Lanka can afford to have this airline at this loss levels. If you compare the rest of the expenses and the money we lose on some of the SOEs, those SOEs are being protected for no strategic value. Sri Lankan Airlines, national carrier, has uh, immense strategic value for value for this nation. From a from a uh, from a simple PR perspective, when you have a couple of aircraft going to Heathrow air, air, uh, Airport, when they turn, at least every day, if you put advertising on an international channel to advertise Sri Lanka, it will cost us more. Who will bring? Uh, uh, 70 year old average 70 year old uh, uh, Frankfurt traffic who would, wouldn't want to go through uh, 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 airports. No other airline would do that for tourism, which is strategically important. So net net, you have to analyze this. I'm saying thinking, 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 or looking at it creatively. I mean, it's like us having like a good good vehicle. Huh? It is companies actually, if you analyze. Our company's fleet of vehicles, if you if you put it from a, a PNL perspective, it is a major loss to the company. If you take a look at the directors and directors and uh, and probably uh, some of the senior staff, they can come in smaller vehicles. Yes, but that carry value, PR value. That carry that carry other values around it, like like Sri Lankan Airlines. It is strategically important. But now, first thing what we say is, let's sell Sri Lankan Airlines. That's a solution. Sri Lankan Airlines is not making losses because Sri Lankan Airlines is inefficiently run. That could be a part of a problem. It is due to the public sector thinking, lack of creativity, which is getting infused, even if you put the best CEO from the private sector, they go and muck up the thinking of the, the airline. So, having said that, 
every other time when there is some economic issue we say sell the SOEs and reduce the size of the public sector we forget I was watching uh, a YouTube interview a good friend of ours uh, Dhanath uh, talking about it you know this economy is simply divide should be divided into two internal and external however much we are going to save this money which is actually is the easiest thing to do is not going to solve our problem now look look at the look at a company from let's say this analogy now company company's earnings are not enough our revenue is not enough to cover the overheads then two things we can do increase the revenue and reduce the cost within the company if you try to do anything to save that is to only to reduce the cost but in a country situation how the only thing what we have to do is to reduce the cost so how do we engage the Sri Lankan citizen in this dialogue on a pos positive note that we need to reduce our cost because the possibility of us, us improving our income or revenue is limited. We will come to that, but on the face of it, it is limited. So, however, we need to think and think differently, and we have to we have to engage the entrepreneurship of this country in this dialogue in a more much more active manner than what is happening now. Now, now actually, this so-called entrepreneurship, the 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 driving force of in in this thinking, they are binam. They go behind bank clerks. They go behind uh, revenue of tax officers with some onilops also in hand and trying to find solutions how to pay not how to not pay taxes how to get uh, their bank loans re uh, 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 structured so now there is reality there is perception the perception is that we are in deep shit reality is not if you look at it differently because solutions are simple still i must say if you look at it creative who says that we need this much of wealth? It's a perception. It's a perception. Finally, what would we need? We need happiness. All what we do in this is to make keep, keep people happy. Like what Bhutan did. They moved away from GDP nonsense and they come up with their own index and they they put forward a completely different thinking. The fact that one would think today going to a resort in the week at the, in, in this weekend is going to make us happy. If you make a make a mental sort of shift in their thinking, the happiness shift by engaging them in this discussion, we can example we can reduce the cost of fuel and the. And our perception towards the public trans public transport, and of course, in that also there is some reality, but which we can address in this in this discussion. How we can encourage public transport and reduce the private uh, commutation. So, desperate times, and we need desperate solutions. That is only innovation. Only innovation. Think completely differently. Think. Think what other people have not thought of as a solution in the world if you are trying to bring venezuela as an example we forget that they have the they are the third largest oil wells in the world so we bring in peru we bring in argentina we in this discussion talk you know this country did it this way this country did it. we just don't have that but having said that we can really convert our old product 
of this country at large to a completely newly packaged beautiful uh, offering to the world. What is it? I may say one or two, one or two examples. You may have more. That is why today's thing is not a speech but a discussion. We want you to participate. This is just to start this momentum. I mean to to get into this discussion because you must remember that only we can change it. If you are expecting this change from someone else, someone else from politicians to the bureaucracy, this will not happen. If we can change, we can change it by actively participating in this dialogue. So you, this is what I want to show you. If you have no oil wells, these are the wells that we have, oil wells. Ah, this is the example that I can take now this IT industry in this country. We are at the moment, sorry to say that, people who represent the industry. We are just like sending uh, uh, people to Middle East. We do it locally. Graduates doing coding. The basic and working for others, this is cheap labor. But the, this is the kind of talents, so Google Summer of Code, we come right on top. Where do we try at least? Ha, are we discussing about that in this discussion? See that we need to do something, we are really screwed. We need to do something like we have no, no oil, we have no gold, we have no diamonds. I mean, but we are people. Now, when I say that, I know that this goes back to this old dialogue of saying, you know, we always talk about this nation's talent and nation's power of thinking and all that. And you talk about, you know, Tisavava and Ruan Velisaya and Sigiriya and all that. Now, it is not. This is real time today what's happening. Now, this, this nation possesses a special place in the world. For having this indigenous capability of creative thinking. So, but if you look at uh, the conversion of this, the product, the our, 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 our product is not getting transformed to what we want it to be. So, we should be able to produce, if you take the IT industry the architects who can add real value, bring in immediate dollars to this nation. And we at Aramuna met a good friend of ours, Karan Bajaj, who sold his startup, uh, whitehead.com, for almost 430 million US dollars <laughs> within less than uh, two years. Israel. Sorry. Because I wanted to be a theoretical physicist. And uh, I, so I went to Princeton and uh, I, I was a really good student, as I pointed out already. I, I got A pluses on almost everything I, I um, uh, had. Uh, was in the honors, honors physics track which starts out with you know, 100 students, and by the time you get to quantum mechanics, it's like 30. So I'm in quantum mechanics, I think this is like junior year, and I've also been taking a bunch of computer science classes, electrical engineering classes, which I'm also enjoying. And I, um, I can't solve this partial differential equation. It's really, really hard. And uh, I've been studying with my uh, roommate, Joe, who also is really good at math. And, um, and the two of us worked on this one homework problem for three hours and got nowhere. And we finally said, looked up at each other at the table at the same moment, and we said, Yosanta. Because Yosanta was the smartest guy at Princeton. And uh, we went to Yosanta's room, and he was Sri Lankan. And in the Facebook, which was an actual paper book at that time, there were, his name was 
three lines long because I guess in Sri Lanka when you do something good for the king, they give you an extra syllable on your name. And so he had a super long last name, most humble, wonderful guy. And he's showing this problem. And he looks at it, he stares at it for a while, and he says, Kosan. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, that's the answer. I'm like, that's the answer? And he's like, yeah, let me show you. So he brings us into this room, he sits us down, he writes out three pages of detailed algebra. Everything crosses out, and the answer is Kosan. And I said, listen, if Santa, did you just do that in your head? And he said, no, oh, that would be impossible. Uh, three years ago, I solved a very similar problem, and I was able to map this problem onto that problem, and then it was immediately obvious that the answer was cosine. And I, that was an important moment for me, because that was the very moment when I realized I was never going to be a great theoretical physicist. And um, so I started doing some soul searching. I was like, that, you know, that is a magic trick. It's a, the people who, the, you know, theoretical physics, in most occupations, if you're in the 90th percentile, or more, you're going to contribute. In theoretical physics, you're going to be like one of the top 50 people in the world, or you're really just not helping out much. You know, you're, uh, and, uh, and so uh, I was very clear that I, like, I, I, I saw the writing on the wall. And um, I changed my uh, major very quickly to electrical engineering. I just want to play this because, you know, this is the kind of Sri Lankans. So now first, we got to change our mood, our attitude, because we are waiting till, of course, we wait till the ships come, and then we wait till the white guys come in their jackets to come and tell us what to do and we sit with them they tell us what to do i have nothing against them but we must have this attitude that we are a creative nation we really are a creative nation and we have to because it's a human nature when you are pushed onto a wall then you find solution we, as we Sri Lankans probably are best at it. So now we are forced to be creative. If we didn't know that we are creative, we know now we are very creative because we find solutions. We have a reason to find solutions. We have to sit, reason to sit and now look for solutions. So remember the tagline, you know, the out, outside world can't find as effective solutions as that we can find indigenously. So I don't want to use this word indigenous because it has been hacked and it has been now been rejected. But that is in a different context. This is in a different context. Let's look at this creatively. I was just uh, looking at these numbers of uh, tech exist. Uh, Israel, if I am not mistaken, Damit, it is about 80 billion, uh, 80 billion. 80 billion uh, last year, 80 billion. One year, just by thinking ideas, it is equivalent to our GDP. Just by thinking of few ideas put together, just found a little solution and sold it. And that is equivalent to our GDP. So, if you want to find solutions, let's start thinking differently. Use this opportunity. Finally, I would want to say, I know this is the most controversial discussion and one would think that uh, a president had to go home because of what he tried to implement this agriculture, carbonic uh, govitan, organic agriculture. I will, I really want you to one day join us again, a similar forum like this, we want to discuss that. Because there are a couple of my friends who are here, who are involved in these discussions. They try to equate the failure of impl implementation as a wrong concept. And we know the inner workings and why it failed. But today, 
while we are waiting for fuel shipments, coal shipments, now we have to wait for fertilizer shipments as well. So another ship. So we got to find a solution. The first ship to be avoided in this equation is fertilizer ship. We know we can do it. Like the Israel, the way I looked at it, the agriculture. We know the solution. It got screwed simply not because the concept was wrong. It is that so called public se sector. We can go to details. It is another discussion by itself. I have to mention that because there are some of my friends who think otherwise. Let us meet and discuss that. Then, as I told you, this is a discussion. Please join us uh, to discuss. And we are here uh, to sort of facilitate. Anyone can come here and speak. Uh, you do not have to agree with uh, you know the creative thinking as Rohan uh, who represents the creative industry would know this is basically to disagree. To start with this brainstorming is to disagree. When you agree it will, is, is going to be like the public sector. We do not want to be there. We want you to disagree and argue towards a better creative product which we call it in our language big idea. So big ideas won't just come. We need to fight with each other among other uh, among us. Then we can come up with these good ideas which can really shock the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you Dilip. Thank you Dilip for stirring things up. Um, and getting the brainstorm started. You spoke about the important role of the private sector and uh, the need to do things differently and innovatively. Um, and you also brought up the example about Sri Lankan Airlines. And uh, I was thinking, I'm sure many of in, you in the audience know this, but uh, did you know that Sri Lankan Airlines, because it was the South Asia's first airline, we have uh, grandfather rights to some of the most coveted um, travel routes in the world. Do you know if we are using them? Anybody has an answer? Are we using the grandfather rights of the Sri Lankan Airlines? No. We are not using our grandfather rights. We are not running them either. We are not monetizing them. We are not leasing them out. We are not selling them out. We are just sitting on it. So my first question to you and to all of you here, there are lots of creative minds in the audience I can see today. Do we have a problem monetizing things? Is that where we need to bring our creativity um, first? I mean, we are talking about the private sector and innovation. Philip, what do you think? See, see the, the point is, and it looks like that it is getting set into our minds, you know, that we have to be happy with what we have and, you know, we are a nation, always been okay with things and, you know, we are not very materialistic. We are this, we are that. It is the influence of Buddhism and you know we are very, it really has not been so in the past and it should not be in the future. But the, to answer your question, we got to monetize every bloody thing that we have because we are fighting with the world. You know, it's not that, not that, not that if we are running a, running a little boutique here, it's okay. But we got to fight with the world. So we have to monetize every possible thing. Like I am not saying that we should be like Thailand, uh, but I mean, if you look at uh, if you look at Sri Lanka tourist uh, industry, and since we represent the industry, uh, and my friends are here, you know, when you do an itinerary in in, in for a Sri Lanka, the tourist who comes to Sri Lanka, do the itinerary, uh, give a reason for a for a tourist to stay in Colombo city for more than one night. They can go to Gangarame, they can go to Odell, they can go to uh, probably now the, uh, the tower. You give, you tell one reason why they should be staying here for two days. No reason. Why? Because we don't, we don't, we don't look at it that way. We tell tourists to come, the restaurant should do well. Why would they stay? Because they have seen the world. They have been to other cities. 
they are not coming here to you know observe sin or something right so why without talking about that you know we got to monetize everything i mean probably within ethical yeah. boundaries but if you look at sri lankan airlines another discussion by itself if if one would want to keep that as a protected entity for the country without privatize i would say privatize yes privatize it doesn't mean that you sell it to somebody you know invite us we come there give this to us without interference we'll run it and show but you have to got to accept this is totally undercapitalized we have not taken the rest of the 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 value you know we import milk powder to the tune of 80 billion by stopping milk powder imports no one is going to starve in fact the nation will be healthier because it contains anything but other than for milk then you can save sri lankan airlines as per their records it's 86 billion so stop milk powder and keep sri lankan airlines at least we can say we are a proud country to have a national carrier what's the problem we lose money so what why not this is a solution simple solution and also i mean going back to this your argument about privatization countries in the region i don't know how many of you have been uh, looking at what pakistan is going through similar situation like ours just much worse um they recently went for a bailout from the imf they also got a massive loan from china and they are also going through a restructuring of their state owned enterprises but the 49 to 51 deal that we always offer is not on the table for most of their soes they've come up with some creative options um for buyback options and guess who came and bought back some of their soes it's china so lots of chinese investments are coming back into pakistan so they've what i'm trying to say is that even with privatization there's not only one thing that you can do there's many different modalities in which you can restructure soes and the question is whether we are doing it right now right um any other any comments or questions from the audience rohan any comments ah okay can i speak like yeah sure 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 you can you can you can give your mic Yeah, no, no. Uh, just a question that I like, think is, you know, based on the. Hello. Hold on, I'll just speak. No, but I think uh, others can. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. I'm speaking now both as a technical expert as well as a non-expert on both sides. Right? One of the things that you said about the deficit in thinking, and one other side. We have a problem. We think like grocery store orders trying to run supermarkets. Our mindsets are small. That's one side. On the other side, it's very dangerous that we have this idea of learning helplessness. We have brought ourselves to the point where we think that we can't. This mindset change is not that easy to engineer amongst the common people of the country. So, despite of all of the best ideas that we have to try to make sure that these guys can understand that, you know, on the one side we have two assets. You mentioned that on the one side we have massive bio assets, agriculture. On the other side we have massive intellectual assets, the IT. Both of these assets are massively underutilized. because the people who are supposed to be in charge of them the people who are supposed to be driving them are people who have no idea about the bigness of what we have and i'm just speaking and push that through to every single person in this country none of us is going to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps we are all this looking helpless at people outside of our own ecosystems to try to solve all problems and as long as we have that 
Yeah. So that is basically is the Arjuna, the, the premise that you know we 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 are desperately trying to sort of you know see some solutions in this equation. This is where we are. So we need to we need to start it from somewhere. Change the mindset of the people that we are being told that we cannot. So we'll change it. We should. Yeah. We can. Yeah, we can. Anyone else? Yeah, please go ahead. Sam, that is true. Cannot disagree with you because so this is actually could be somewhat of a political discussion, but that is true because what has happened is what the, the country's narrative is being, being uh, uh, directed by some groups who really do not believe in this uh, the real value of our nation. So then what we see is really not the, the, the truth, but the edited version of it. That is where uh, Arjuna, the problem sometimes lies. See, we read papers, we read, uh, we, re we watch uh, sometimes the social media or even our own news content or whatever. It's been not what we would probably want to see, but it is being orchestrated. So we have to be open about it. We, we shouldn't feel shy about it. We should talk about it. We should uh, discuss this and make sure we actively participate in this. Can I tell a think tank story? Yes. Since he brought up think tanks. So a leading think tank in Colombo, I won't take the name, but recently they've gone on record saying that um, Sri Lanka has a huge food insecurity problem because we in, uh, urban uh, populations eat a lot of imported food. Therefore, since we cannot afford to import, we can't afford imports, therefore they're going to be hungry in the next six months or so. But what this think tank failed to see in the numbers is that yes, we import food, that's 30% of our food bill, but the 70% is grown here. So why is it that they're not saying the 70% that is locally grown has to be increased instead of, you know, working for the import lobby? So at times, yeah, you're right. Like I'm also confused as to who they're working for. So the, the other best example is malnutrition figures. You know, the World Food Program, the organization says Sri Lanka has a 40% malnutrition. So in fact, I challenged many of my doctor friends, you bring one family, one family with a malnut uh, the child with malnutrition they couldn't in fact some of my friends are here who are part of that forum forum here in this hall we met the midwives of sri lanka representing the the island these are the midwives you know that who visit uh, all the households where there are babies or pregnant mothers or up until they are five years, they are legally bound to go. They swear to say that not a single family except in certain areas like no area due to their food culture, the, what we call the estate lines and certain pockets in Sri Lanka, again due to historic reasons, but due to the cost of living, you know, our culture, our civilization would not ever allow Rohan, we know that if we get to know that some family is suffering from malnutrition, 
this this midwives are saying it is a major insult on them they said say if we know such thing, such family we will go and find food and bring and make sure that this family is fed that is our our, our culture of this nation or the civilization it may not happen in the west but they come and say 40 percent how they arrive at 40 percent is very interesting you divide the gdp then you uh, arrive at uh, per capita then you divide per capita rural uh, uh, suburb and uh, and uh, what do you call the the towns and that how you divide these depending on whether it is a pradeshiya sabha or whether it is uh, whether it is a town council or municipality and then kolonava becomes uh, rural uh, or maybe mahargama will probably become rural whereas uh, whereas uh, maybe some kalavanchikudi or something will become uh, the city you know so then they get these numbers crunch 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 and suddenly see, if that is so, 40% of the family should be technically with malnutrition kids. Now they have no system to track. Even if you want to go on these figures, close to 40% of our production, including agriculture produce, is not being represented through our GDP. You and I know. From Delgadia, Polgadia to Kosgadia to Kiriati to Kirimutia to Bittare to everything is not going through the formal channels. So, how will the GDP track our, our, our real produce? So, their numbers are all, all the, wrong. So, so, we know, I mean, in this country, people will not starve for sure. Because we, at the moment, consume close to 340 billion rupees worth of FMCG, which is in carbonated soft drinks category, which is in uh, malted drink category, which is, which is in um, noodles category. So these are still luxuries which we consume. And, uh, and we, uh, I think, uh, burn about 500 million worth of uh, incense, Hanumkuru, a month. So we can't say that we are. Uh, we are doing badly. Huh? So, we, we, I don't want to mention brand name, but brands are in billions. Billions. So, people still buy some sausages, why they call it karala, in from shops. And they sell probably their own eggs or, eggs or curd or something and convert it to money and must be going and buy that. But the point is, we are not that badly off to start with. We can't go by this GDP figures. GDP figure itself is not bad because it's like 20,000 per person, I mean per family per day. So let's be happy about it. But what we are trying to say is this is a different story. But Dilip, you know, you bring up a good point about like, okay, if we want to stop the do dollar outflow, right, we need to contain our consumption. But is that is that easy to do? Because the last Very time I easy. checked, we had this uh, massive protest without AC, without... See, squirrels. that is, that is, see, you got to change the base. If my belief is to have good, uh, good uh, single malt uh, as a base, any other drink is going to make me unhappy. But now that we have cornered it to at 9, I think it's a single mall is a waste of money. So it's a mind shift. You shift the mind. You one would think a malted malted drink is a must in the morning. If you think no, nice kahata without sugar is the best. Sri Lanka will save 80 billion altogether. 80 billion. Cut down on sugar consumption by educating the people, telling the truth, sharing. You know, it kills your happiness. 50% of the people are diabetics in this country for excessive consumption. So take this story forward and tell them, engage them. You know, this is for happiness. It is not to save the money, but to make you happier. You will be less important at least when you are not uh, diabetic. You can say you can, you have happy activities. Eat less sugar. Be more active in bed. But when you say Sorry, when you say that, but when you say that, people think that you're only saying this to 
the, the low income masses, whereas the richer people still continue to enjoy their luxuries, right? So there, there is that argument out there. So how do you how do you get the entire country's consumption? See, that lifestyle? is this is this is the point. So now what this country or the, the politicians and the and mostly the politicians, what have they lost to start with? They lost faith. So we have to bring faith into the system. They should this should not be seen as like some 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 gimmick, uh, some some contraption created to save money and, and rob uh, from them. Instead, it should be very transparent. So, I mean, the solution is very simple. India has done it. Uh, the rest of the world has done it. Targeted welfare by using our, our IT, IT creativity. We can do it overnight. We can go for targeted welfare, find the families. We don't have to waste money in just randomly distributing something called uh, Samurdi, we can just give it precisionly targeted welfare and cut all the possible avenues for the so called rich to have this luxury uh, without a cost. Without a cost. No, that is a problem. So, when you go and pump petrol, which has been, I did not know, is uh, 113. Uh, um, uh, uh, liters, uh, the, what you call the Bowser from uh, Flower Road Shed, a day 95, uh, 95 uh, uh, petrol we have consumed in the past, only one shed, another shed in uh, Rosmit place, another Bowser. So we are taking from the poor and consuming which is not fair. They have to be, they should be able to pay and we can pay. The rich should pay. But the point is, we should do this. Okay. Um, just seeing a lot of young faces in the audience, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about this exodus. Young people leaving the country. I mean, every day I drive past Bataramulla, where you, you know, everybody's waiting to get a passport to leave Sri Lanka. And the latest figures are. In, by, this is not latest, this is June. Foreign Employment Bureau says more than 200,000 people had left for jobs abroad compared to 120,000 last year. And a little bit alarming is that Association of Government Medical Officers said that 500 doctors has, have left the country in 2022, with uh, some without due notice, leaving huge gaps in health and hospital system. Um, and then the Sri Lankan government also lowered the age of migration, right, from uh, 25 to 21. So how do you see this brain drain? I mean, this is not just for you, this is for anybody who wants to answer in the, in the audience. What do you say to young people who want to leave Sri Lanka? Who see, see no hope? See, see, Vagisha, how this is the problem, no? That is because they have lost faith. Why they have lost faith? Because their experience had been not very positive. So one reason that they are now is there is no this discussion because there is no faith because they can't see anything happening they think the same idiots idiots will come same system will continue and there is no future so if there is this discussion and if people are more hopeful then they will not leave who would want to leave the parents and go who in this country who would want to leave their close relatives and go they are leaving because they are pushed into that kind of wall, they think there is no hope in this nation. We have to go. Uh, but doctors leaving is a fine because our anyway the consumption of uh, uh, medicine is as is little too much. So less doctors meaning it will be less importation of drugs. Uh, probably that would be okay. But the rest of these creative people uh, should not leave. Doctors are the ones we can find uh, the easiest. But, uh, you know, if these creative people leave, especially who's, who represent uh, the IT industry example, who can convert this nation to Israel tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, we can save, we, they can save us, to save this nation. But when they leave, then there's a big problem. That is a problem. So we must take this as a, 
as an example always refer to this creative people should be protected at any cost. Entrepreneurs, these IT uh, graduates, under, undergraduates, um, technicians, architects, they have to be protected first. So that is the big worry if they started leaving the country, then we have no hope. Anybody from the audience, some young people who want to challenge Dilip? Dikshana, <laughs> Dikshana, you agree? Yeah. Huh? You yeah. have to protect. So, so, yeah, last check. You are referring to the political. I mean, yeah, well, no, we have put us in this problem, right? So I think that's the biggest problem. I mean, I'm, I'm not a political politician, but uh, from tech side, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we were I mean, I'm an innovator, tech, tech, tech product. So, so uh, that's hard to get support. Absolutely, zero support for tech product, right? So we recently came up with the solution. Uh, this is the world plus pair of the solution. Zero sum. Right? And, and um, I expect if you are tax free. Um, uh, uh, we are only hoping that you will bring a couple of billions with this product. I mean, if it works uh, out, but we are, we are, we are planning. But the problem is, you know, tax is given to body shop, right? So we have IT companies so forth, but they are body shop, right? As you said, you know, I mean, we are, we are, we are, we are, See, Tikshana, now that is why purposely we are not taking this dialogue on to this uh, the discussion of the about politicians because we, I for myself I can talk, we always try to seek solutions. I think, I think all our Attempts have failed. So, if you ask me now what to do with them, I in fact believe that we have to find a solution which we can sort of together find sans this conventional politician and the political system. Because it's not really going to solve any of any one of problems. Too, as we discussed, they don't possess this knowledge. Even if they don't want to stop, they don't want to rob. If they stop robbing, if they come so clean, they don't have this DNA in their the system. So any discussion you sit with them, you are not going any 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 further. You will talk about that. They will talk about you know I know some honest politicians. Actually, they are worse. Their destruction is uh, even more because they may not rob, but they will not positively contribute towards nation's growth. So in that context, if you think right right, we bring so and so as the leader. So we have tried every possible option under the options under the sun. That's why we didn't want to bring that as a part of this discussion, which, which should become a discussion. A discussion should come from the people. When we create this dialogue, People will give options. People will talk about those options. People will reject politicians who are not capable of running this country to their expectation. You know, like, like, like you all. You will know that there is no support because they don't understand. 
How many of you will understand that there is a concept called tech exist? They won't understand. So why would they support you? Now for me, when I see that, I think, okay, you will bring a billion and we will be billion minus our deficit or more. So I will even come and worship. But then for how would you convince them? You tell me. You are a creative guy. You tell me. You fail. So we don't talk. I have a related question. Um, there is a growing segment, I think, in the population, especially among the younger people, that this economic crisis is not, not our doing. So they, they don't see the structural causes of it. So they say they, we are not to blame for it. But always trying to put the responsibility or externalizing the problem to either the state or the government or foreign sources or whatever it may be. So, but is that really helpful? Is that kind of attitude see, very helpful? See, see, as much as that is what we experience and they feel it, I feel it. Sometimes I am not responsible for, you know, overnight uh, value of assets went down by almost 50% with one decision. So we, we, we have worked so, so much, we have worked so hard and uh, we are not responsible for that decision. Yes, but at the same time, now by this external, externalizing the, the issue, by, uh, by giving it to others, we will not find a solution. It's a good feeling to say that I didn't do it. It's not my fault. They screwed us. Yes. Yeah. So what? It's nice. But it will not bring anything different to the table. But entire political campaigns run on that. Yeah, that is what, as, as Sam said, probably that is like where we get caught. To someone else's trajectory, someone else's uh, slogan. We think, oh my God, so we are being completely disadvantaged because of these, these reasons. But we really would not concentrate on our strengths instead. If we keep concentrating on our strengths, like what India is doing, example. Now, what the Indian entrepreneurship, now the politicians have to go behind the entrepreneurship. Because they are forced to. In Sri Lanka, it's the exact opposite. Because there is no no powerful entrepreneurship lobby, these dealer dealers or deal makers or commission kakas or these people are going to be a politician. As a result, politicians only depend on them. But we must make them dependable on, on, on this, this force. Then they will have to come behind us. Whoever who is coming to politics or whatever to this, this system. But here what happens is the exact opposite. So we create this dialogue. We take control of the people, then the discussion, Sam, is different. Then they will all have to align to this. This is where we have to force ourselves. You know, that's the solution. It's a solution based thinking. Any questions? I know we are running out of time. We probably have how many? Maybe Ikram, you must be itching to ask some questions. I know the questions that you want to ask. I can even answer now or answer later. <laughs> huh? But I know. Uh, uh, then uh, Lalanta is here. Now these are super, uh, super two brands. Uh, now, uh, we don't want to go into details. But now, uh, in terms of local indigenous brands coming out, Every day I see new brands uh, on at least social media. Before we were selling products, now we know that there is a language called brand. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Now we will see in the, in the, in the near future. Uh, Dehan, many companies being listed uh, who, are, who are owners of brands. Because always we believe, unfortunately, we build factories in Sri Lanka. We are very proud of having the largest factory, huh? uh, the biggest uh, uh, land, extent, all that, but we never concentrated on brands. So now I can see. So we, we talk to people, we see, we see now, now this concept is being, being discussed. It's a good thing. Anyway, I think now that we have taken uh, too much of your time, uh, the whole idea of Aramuna is to have a good, good time and good co cocktails, good drinks. Huh? 
Yeah, yes, Lalan, yes. Your brand. Yes, actually, I came from India last week. Very good news for ECO and for the traffic. We are launching ECO in India next Valentine's, 14th February, and prestigious e commerce platform for my profession accommodated us among the international brands. We are completing with Zara, Oregon, Gold Range, and then also we are planning to open the flash zoos in Delhi and Mumbai. So we build the brand and this marketplace, I believe, so that is. So anyway, I have seen, I have been great admirer of Alant. Uh, I saw that brand growing. So this brand story uh, is a good example. Uh, this nation's capacity, you know, we we why we have actual deficit there is as I told you, it's a deficit in our thinking. That real deficit is not is only numerical. Because we we stitch that many million worth of garments, but we only get the get the money for stitching. The the brands are making billions of this, billions of this. And tea, our own product, we know that we are in it. We try hard, but we we have to try harder to convert this to brands. And every everything should be as I. As she asked me, as I am saying, to be monetized. Everywhere we should be looking around what could be monetized. And you have to be careful because we are looking at even our friends uh, at the moment because we are desperate to monetize. Uh, so the monetization is not a bad thing. So the gap between a product and the dream, as you know, Lalanta is, the, is where the money is. So we are in the product game now. We have to convert it to a brand game, which will fix the deficit uh, in no time. Yeah, it's not that someone will give us some loans and uh, some multilateral loans is not going to solve this for country's problem. It has never solved in the past. It has never solved in the rest of the world, in the rest of the countries. It has never got solved. And in fact, in fact it has got worsened. So we will have a solution. We can tell the government. Don't discuss with the IMF, discuss with us. Come, we give a solution, which is a better solution. Yes, Damit. Take the narrative and uh, take the message 
to the masses, to create a self belief. Where do we start? What are we supposed to do? Uh, and how do we join the lead that we have taken to take this to the masses? See, Damit, uh, what we believe is, uh, as he says, we have been doing this, in fact, under different teams. We were trying to empower uh, lots of small and medium scale uh, investors, I mean, entrepreneurs, but then we realized it is the need is much bigger. So that's how we suddenly, you know, put this in together and we thought we would start this discussion. First, I think we should keep this dialogue going at a national level. And, and when they, others are having this big fora in, you know, all these big hotels, big places, spending that many dollars and it's adding to the problem, we also should be having a, a continuous dialogue and getting more and more people uh, uh, joining our, this momentum. And so taking, taking this, this forward is the first solution. The second, uh, as you very correctly mentioned, so we have to give, infuse the, the people uh, the belief that we, we can do it. So we have to take these examples. We can, we have to take Ikram to the people. We have to take Lalanta to the people. We have to take people and show it is possible. Think differently. You just can do build brands. Example, you do, you know, you may be doing India Punk, but you know, branded India Punk can be done. So then you make more money. You know, now, now as I've been telling everyone, now the tourism, the problem is we don't get that buck to our, our kitty because we just give raw India punk. Now we have to, you know, wrap it with something, put a name and we should learn the, the McDonald's trick, you know, sell the bun uh, at a premium. So we have to take this to the people. They should know that they are deprived of something, something big, something big. You know, they are deprived of the art of bullshitting, which the rest of the world is is doing and we are getting screwed. We are at a major disadvantage while probably consuming uh, all these uh, branded, uh, you know, junk. We also should be able to play in the game. I am not saying we should stop any multinational being here or their, their game. They should be there. We should be equally good at it. We should have this, you know, uh, like Big Mac kind of uh, India upper presentation where we can take that extra buck from uh, from the from the consumer this is where the problem we can do it let's do it and we we, we should not stop it uh, Damit. we should hashtag india punk india punk <laughs> yeah. yeah sure sure we should see the point of it is actually the 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 <laughs> If at all, if I had to say as a conclusive, uh, uh, concluding remark, uh, the point is this nation biggest asset, well, the, 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 what do you call the, uh, the USP, if we had any uh, differentiator for the sincerity, but very thing is being challenged by our own people. We go talk to people. They look at you with a big question mark, however much you are sincere. But this nation is built on this civilization of sincerity, right? So we first have to build this faith based on sincerity that this is a sincere approach. And we are not here coming to you and like, like a charismatic church coming and giving you some sermons or something. And we are here with some tangible solutions. We want to make you rock. That is the whole idea. Thanks once again. Yeah. Suresh, Dimel. Yeah. Yes, of course. That is the whole idea, the whole premise of this. Do this.
And that thinking, right now, we don't have any separation in this time. Everything is negative. I don't agree with you uh, to, that, to that extent, but of course they are being neglected. Yes, that is the problem. And the reason is that people want to work for the government or work for somebody or leave the country. They think always in a pasture is somewhere else. Then Sri Lanka is full of resources. I mean, you can ask any foreigner who comes here. Now I have that French consultant. He went to France for one month and he came back in two months, in two weeks. And he said it's so expensive to stay in France, I'm going to go back to Sri Lanka. So, Resh, the problem is very clear, but the solution lies uh, there itself. See, if you look at our curriculum from grade 1 to grade 12, then after that university. Nowhere in the, our uh, curriculum we have, this, we are discussing this. Truth is that. The, the, the some of the academics would agree with me. The point is, for some reason, for the probably the reason that Sam mentioned, huh, it is not being taught to start with. Now, how do you, one would, you ask the business community itself. They think they are entrepreneurs. Actually, they don't know the difference between just becoming a businessman and entrepreneur. Uh, if you have no innovative idea with you, have no product, innovative product, you are not an entrepreneur. You are just a businessman. You are just, you can buy, sell, you are a trader. Yes, you have taken some risk by not joining the government workforce probably. That should be, you know, uh, appreciated. But it doesn't mean that you are an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is someone who has a unique proposition of your own and which is being turned out to be a product or a service or something, right? So now that is being taught in, in, in other countries. I have been taught in there. I mean, I myself have taught, seen from their, from their, from their uh, uh, young age. They have been taught to come up with an idea. You can convert to a, uh, uh, you can monetize it. You can benefit from it. Now, in, in, in our curriculum, uh, there is nothing like that. Uh, I have a proposal. That you is. should have an entrepreneurship reality show. Yeah, that is one way to do it. I think it will be very popular. That way probably is one way to do it, yes. Agreed. All right. All right. Any more questions? All right, seeing none, congratulations to Echo for winning the Indian market. Very proud of you. On that very positive note, 